Let's play a game. Spot the antenna in the HOA behind the Charlie Brown Christmas tree here with no leaves on it. This is Ham Radio Concepts. Good afternoon, everyone. KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. John? Hi, John. KM4MCK. It's like chameleon day out here. I said, John, we got nothing better to do but play with antennas and radios out here. And uh, <laughs> can't go anywhere to eat because all the restaurants are closed with the COVID-19, but no problem. Everybody's home now playing ham radio. And you've heard, you've witnessed that as well in the bands, haven't you? Bands are not there. There are people everywhere that say, we can't go anywhere. Why not get on the ham radio? Sure. So, John, this is, um, you just purchased a, a M Pass. It's coming. This is mine that I purchased. We've been playing with this. This is something that I'm interested in. What were we doing earlier today uh, when you were out at QRP? What were we trying and playing with? Um, Two-meter sideband. And I'm a big fan with that 9700. I love two-meter sideband. And uh, John's got a Yagi now. So this is the VHF UHF portable uh, addition or uh, add-on kit to the m -Pass. So open this up, John. Let's check it out real quick. And basically, uh, we'll try this out real quick. I'm not sure if there's going to be anybody on two-meter sideband at the moment. But the fact of the matter is, when I get the ICOM 705, that does 160 through 70 centimeters. And with this m -Pass and this add-on kit, it will do... 160 through 70 centimeters. So I'll have one antenna, one radio, and do everything. So let's take a look at this, and we're gonna pop that open in a minute. This is the, uh, the, the box here, the magic box. And what you get, and I haven't even looked at this instructions yet, we'll do it together. Basically, it allows you to add it onto the end of the military extension for the Chameleon m -Pass and give you horizontal or vertical polarized, uh, like a dipole on uh, two meter and 70 centimeter. Great for if you wanna be out in the field, field day, VHF contest, portable, or even just you guys bugging out and going out in the woods and you wanna be able to use APRS or two meter sideband or CW, AM, whatever. You can put this box on top of the, uh, the military extension right here. And John's gonna do this now because John's excited now. He's like, man, I should have ordered one of these. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna check this out and uh, just see what it's like. Yeah. So it covers 144 to 148 megahertz. Power is 100 watts. It also covers 420 to 450 megahertz. And all you really need is the antenna base and the two VHF UHF whips. What's this say right here? Polarization vertical and horizontal by changing the radiator whip position. Space required, diameter 40 inches. All right, so taking this apart here, I just wanted to see, you know, take it apart. It's, um, it, it's a very simple idea, but it's, it's the, the crafting that goes into it. You know, that this isn't a magic trick. Um, they're not telling you there's some sort of magic amplifier in there. It's just the fact that they make it, from what I understand, looking at this, molded. Um, this is, I guess, an ABS plastic. Um, and the, uh, the molded, you know, connectors in there for the screws and all that. Now, if you look at this, this is what makes sense as to horizontal versus vertical. Now, you'd have this mounted on a 3 8 by 24 here. Notice that, you know, the, the SO239 is on the back. So notice the center of your feed point is going to blue and also red. And your ground or the shield is going from the SO239 to green. So if you wanted to run this vertically, you would have to have one, of course, on top. And the other one would go on the green. And the reason for that is if you had one on the top and one on the right, you're still only on the center. It's, it's not going to do you any good. It's like having two antennas on your center coax and nothing on the, you know, because basically you're, you know, you got one here and then your counterpoise here. So it's like, I guess it'll be half wave. So it seems, you know, it's a nice design, uh, nothing magic, but, uh, you know, you see that's, that's what's inside. So in case you want to know what's inside, there it is. Okay, so John's hooking this up now, and, and what happens is basically uh, we're taking the hybrid micro ballon off because you're not radiating through this extension. You're feeding it at the top, okay, and uh, basically now it's just a dipole, horizontal dipole for VHF, UHF, and uh, using the stick as an extension, and uh, no counterpoise wire needed. Uh, you got the, you know, the stake there that he's having trouble pushing into the ground. <laughs> and there you go. This is right here for those who are also in an HOA. Let's say you wanted to get on a two meter net at night. Let's say there's a hurricane and you need two meters, you know, again, a very portable setup right here. One, two, three. Um, and I'll look on the radio. I don't have my analyzer with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look on his 706 Mark II G. 
and see what it looks like. Uh, I'm, I'll try call a CQ for a minute. I'd be amazed if anybody was on two meter sideband or if the band was open. But um, we'll also do a vertical and see, uh, you know, hit a couple repeaters with it and see what it's looking like. But that's uh, something else that will fit in this Empass Go Bag. So this is John's other Go Box. So he's got the 7300 that he pulled out of the shack, but he's also got the, his Go Box. Show us. Uh, Icom Mark II, uh, 706 Mark II G. Right. Uh, MFJ 945 tuner, speaker. I got a 30 amp hour bioeno battery. Uh, inexpensive power supply. And I do have a PowerGate Epic um, controller for the battery power, solar power. Right. And uh, I don't have it hooked up yet. So I'm getting there. External speaker there. External speaker. Let's fire it up here real quick and see. So this is more like uh, not his necessarily his bug out bag, but he takes this um, to the QRP. Everything is in there. I think he's got a couple more things he wants to do with it, but he could just set this thing up and deploy, and uh, away he goes. Okay, so the amateur way without an uh, analyzer, I'm going to zoom in here. So we're on um, FM just for the sake of using the meter on the radio to check the SWR. Kilo mic four, mic Charlie Kilo. Okay, so the SWR and the FM portion is like flat. This is KM4 MCK, Kilo mic four, mic Charlie Kilo. Man, SWR is just flat across the, both of them. Uh, there's no tuner involved or anything, right? That's just right to the radio. Right to the radio. Yeah, you don't have a tuner for VHF, VHF. So while that's all good when you have a go kit or sideband, let's say you just want to, in the field, extend your range of communications far past a rubber duck on a handheld. John said, well, why don't we just hook this up to uh, my D-Star handheld here and see if we can hit it for one watt here in the back porch instead of having to go out there and holding it above my head. It's not that far away, but when you get a lot of houses and stuff sometimes, it's a little hard to hit a repeater is five, 10 miles away sometimes. So for, you know, backpack portable, let's say you're bugging out or your emergency communications and you want to have local. For me, you know what I want to do with this, John? I would use this to have APRS and Windlink on VHF in a backpack because, you know, here's my go kit. I have my laptop, solar panel, everything in here. I can do digital communications for sending email and stuff like that. Uh, so that would be cool to have that in my bag for that. I'm not sure if I was out in the field how much of a repeater I'd be talking on. But for those who are in an HOA, again, you want to extend your range uh, on a handheld. Let's say you want to get into a little bit of a D-Star you know, radio that's a little bit far away. What do you got there? What's that old radio? It's an old Icon uh, 9280. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't get a 51A, huh? I got it in the truck. I'll go grab it. <laughs> no, you don't I like this it. radio. Yeah, this one works fine. So he's got the D now he's got the real handheld, the ID51. Uh, he's got the D-Star machine lined up on here. Can you go to low power on that? Let's S L O super low, I guess. It's it super is. low. How many watts is that? Is that 10 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts? Yes. I, I think it's 100 milliwatts. Okay, and what's the signal report back from the repeater? KM4 MCK. That thing's full scale on the back. That's nice. What's your what's your standard procedure with a uh, a handheld with the rubber duck on this thing inside your house or even out here. I mean, can you do that on? I know it's I, only I, I know to, it's only a handful of miles away, but could you do that on 100 milliwatts? Uh, no, I usually have to bump it up a little bit more. So yeah. So it, it, is it making an advantage? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Well, that's working. that's uh, that's a plus then. I mean, the you know the idea is portability and uh, discreetness. I'm gonna hide this behind this tree. So see if you decided to hide this thing in here. Look, I mean, if you want to be crafty, maybe you got better trees than this. Man, nobody ain't gonna say nothing. And even if they do, well, I don't know, you come up with an excuse, but really, really stealth. I mean, you could hide this thing in an HOA pretty easily, I think. So his HOA is just not happy at the moment. <laughs> John decided that we're gonna have an antenna shootout here. So what we were doing was we were just testing the efficiency or effectiveness of this chameleon. And um, I noticed one thing was um, you can notice how John's a little closer here. It seems that something was reacting when we had the 50 foot coax on there to where it was making that antenna pretty much deaf. But John was setting up here so we had th that 10 foot piece on these antennas at you know one watt, five watt, whatever. But that one at five watts eh, wouldn't do anything. So then we realized, I guess maybe the coax, you probably wouldn't use the 50 footer, or maybe it has to do with the, I, I'm not sure. But I know that with that 10 foot piece, what were you just on, 100 milliwatts? 
100 milliwatts, we can make the repeater. Um, and uh, that's about the same effectiveness as this ground plane right here. I think the diamond probably did a little better um, at lower power, but that's uh, exactly, that's not the most portable antenna to begin with right there, the VX30. That's just a, you know, little uh, HOA kind of antenna, but he, we wanted, he wanted to see. He said, Eric, I really want to do this test. I want to see. Okay, well, we'll set them all up. The portability uh, is the factor. Maybe I would, you know, lose uh, an S unit or two in comparison for, um, you know, portability because this one right here wouldn't be so poor. This would be good for a fixed installation. Uh, so with the diamond, but that's really not the most portable there. So I, I kind of appreciate the portability of this chameleon here. But uh, John, do you have anything to add to this? I mean, are you, I, I think I really, you know, I'll probably mostly be using that in the field instead of putting the roll-up J-pole, just so if I want to do some, like, wind link or APRS or whatever. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The portability of it is why I like it. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure maybe oh, I'll have to. I mean, if sideband, if there's, any, if there's ever anybody on a 2-meter or UHF sideband, I could try it. But I think that would be a little less efficient on sideband. But I'm pretty sure if the band's open, the band's open. You know? Well, if I was going to set that antenna up here permanently at the house next to that tree or somewhere, uh, I would probably have it on there since it's available and have two antennas outside. Yeah, but, but but I guess you can't you can't put that on and the HF whip, so you're one or the other. Oh, uh, correct. You know, you'd have to pick. I mean, but some people aren't into HF and they're just in the HOA and they, like I showed, want to hide it in a tree or whatever. Um, that would be you know what they could could use. And I mean, that's better than nothing. You know, I mean, you can get an antenna. I mean, if you could hide something like this in your HOA, fine. But if you can't, you know, you don't even have to have the whole Chameleon M Pass kit. You just need this part on top with the VHF UHF and mounted on anything that'll accept the 3 8 by 24. You don't have to have the impasse. My logic is I want that in my go kit so I have all the bands. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, uh, that wraps that one up. And 7-3, uh, uh, John, it, it's like antenna day out here today, buddy. HOA, ante HOA ham radio antenna day at John's. That everybody's struggling to find an antenna, and we're just knocking contacts. <laughs> we were on a repeater with like nine people doing antenna comparisons, uh, and everybody else here is, I don't know where they're vacationing, but uh, don't say you can't do it in an HOA, right, John? If there's, if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> there's a, <laughs> seven three guys.